All right, so we're making mead here today. We've got a one gallon jug that I have washed and sanitized. If you just want to wash it out with soap and very hot water, that's great. Otherwise, you can get this stuff. Star San it says it's an acid sanitizer. Um, I suppose you could probably use a good amount of vinegar. That's pretty acidic. Uh, and some hot water, or you could use bleach, you know, like maybe a cap of bleach um, and then hot water and wash it out, but I've heard you can get the bleach flavoring stuck in there. So now all this, let me explain what this is, I guess. This is clover honey that I can get from all these for about five bucks for a pound and a half. Um, found a good ratio of honey uh, for a gallon here is about I like two and a half pounds of honey what what um, three is good three will give you a nice sweet mead but I think two and a half is a perfect uh, alcohol content good flavor not too sweet not too uh, hot I guess you could say I feel like if you use less honey uh, the mead to me, it just tastes a little more hot. Maybe I could probably stand to just give it more time fermenting. But, um, <laughs> it's hard for me to wait sometimes, guys. Alright, so, this is going to take a while. I'm just going to fast forward here. Alright, so I've got the amount of honey that I want in there. Um, let's say there's maybe a third or a quarter bottle left of this. Maybe half, whatever. I like to think that's about two and a half pounds of honey. Um, so I got a little funnel here because now is the water part. Here's what I like to do with my mead. Um, this is actually a, an orange tea that I made. So I guess you could classify this as technically not a mead. It's more of like a, what do you call it, a methglen? Uh, I, in my Mathematics on that is basically um, tea is just a bunch of herbs, right? And uh, a methylene, you're actually putting herbs into your mead. That's what makes it a methylene. It's all sorts of different variations of mead. You can always go check it out on the internet. But I found if I come up with an, a nice flavored tea, like a, a cherry tea or a, maybe like a lemon ginseng tea, there's so many fruity teas out there, you could really use anything, and the final product, you, you can really pick up on that flavor so much better than you would if you chopped up fruit or something like that and put it in there expecting to get like strawberry flavor or blackberry flavor. Yeah, that's my personal opinion, I just found the tea gives it some, uh, some great flavor. So uh, Next, I'm going to fill this up with some filtered water. We have a reverse osmosis system in our house, so that filters it out really well. It's got it's a five-stage filter. Um, <clears throat> other people will buy purified water from the store, a couple gallon jugs, and use that. I think if you got really crummy uh, city water, I would probably think about doing that instead of having some chlorinated type of water. Um, you know, I could see the the chlorine in the water possibly doing a number on your yeast. Yeah, it makes sense. That's kind of what it's there for, is to clean the water, so. All right. Uh, we got it full of water here. Next thing I'm going to do, um, put in some raisins. What is this for? Put it in raisins. Uh, we do this because they say it kind of acts as a yeast nutrient. You can also buy a yeast nutrient at your brewery store. But, why? If you got raisins at home, do that. Alright, next comes the yeast. Hold on. Okay. Yeast. Quick rundown on that. The Lalvin D47 wine yeast. Uh, that makes some really good mead with that. I'd say that's pretty familiar in the mead brewing industry. Next up, I've tried this uh, Premier Blanc active dry yeast uh, 
I don't know. I've only made a couple batches of mead with this. I can't complain about it. Uh, next thing you can use is bread yeast. I've had this around the house. Been using that for, a, you know, I think my first two or three gallons that I made. And I've made some others with bread yeast. Comes out just fine. Um, so, yeah. Whatever you got around the house, it's probably going to be fine if you want, you know, the better final product. You know, they sell this wine specific yeast because it works really well for it. So, uh, it's up to you. Alright, so I'm using the D47 yeast. Uh, this is one I actually already had open from previous batches. One of these pouches you see here, you could probably do about six gallons with that, easy. I think I've probably used a half of one of these on a, a three gallon batch or so. So I'll usually just do, um, we'll do it all, but I've probably already made three or four batches with this. <laughs> All right, now we basically have our mead made. Um, now we're going to talk about an air gap. So basically, when this yeast eats the sugar, it's going to let off gas. So we don't want to just put a cap on this because this will explode. Um, so a cheap way you can do it, I found this works just fine. I do this on all my batches unless I'm doing like a five or six gallon carboy. Then I do have special tops for those. Um, but you want to just find a, a nice size balloon that's going to fit over the end of here. Poke some holes in it so it can release some gas slowly, but not too many holes so that air could get in. Um, when you get air getting in, then you've got um, stuff can just get in your mix here and make it go bad. So um, I'm going to do that now. All right. <clears throat> So we got about, I don't know, 10 holes or so poked in this. I just kind of hold it flat and poke it, so you're actually poking holes through on each side. What that'll do is it's going to fill up, you know, and be like, my kids like to come and squeeze them. They usually keep this in the basement so it's nice and cold. But this will uh, basically be blown up until your batch is done, um, at least done fermenting. Um, you know, then it's just going to hang limp like that. I will shake this up if you have a look. We got our layer of honey on the bottom, our raisins are sinking, all the yeast sunk in there. Um, I'm going to shake this up. I'm going to just put my hand over it like this, hold on to the hoop, and, you know, obviously put a hand on the other end and just shake that up real hard. Um, again, I'll put it in my basement, let it sit until I want to drink it. Um, I found, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people on the internet say, oh, you can make this meat in a month. Yeah, it'll be alcohol, but it's, dude, it's hot. You know, it's, it tastes like it's a super strong alcoholic beverage. Um, and the more time that goes down the road, I found about six months is a good sweet spot where you're not waiting too long. Um, but it, again, it's not too short. You get around a year and the stuff is just super sweet and smooth. Um, but most of my stuff doesn't make it a year because I just like to drink it. So that's my mead. Um, that's about all I can think of right now. Thank you.